H-4 Hercules was an innovative aircraft built as a boat and a plane. Renowned as the largest flying boat ever built, the H-4 Hercules held the record for the widest wingspan of any plane ever flown for over 71 years. In a strange twist, this World War II era plane was constructed out of mostly wood. How did the US government sign off on such outdated materials for a war era plane? You'll find out as we explore the history of this enormous enigmatic aircraft. Supplying the war effort. World War II presented new challenges for the US. The German advance seemed unstoppable, so American generals felt they were rolling the dice if they waited to see whether allied nations would be able to repel the Axis powers long enough for the US to establish a foothold to reinforce the ranks. In the early days of the war, the US was seriously considering building new planes to undertake long transatlantic flights, to skip short distance flights from European bases and instead launch offences from US soil. These new planes would have to be larger than ever to accommodate the fuel requirements for the trip and to carry enough equipment, personnel and payloads to make the trip worthwhile. Other planes, such as the B-36 Peacemaker, were designed for overseas offensive missions, but supply chains were also vital to the war effort. Britain was one of the key players in the war, but they are a relatively small island nation in terms of land mass. As a result, they relied on oceanic transport to deliver crucial supplies such as food, clothing and military goods. Freight shipping was cost-effective, but the Atlantic Ocean was decimated by German U-boat forces during the Battle of the Atlantic. This battle was the longest-running military campaign throughout the war, lasting close to six years from September 3, 1939 to May 8, 1945. 175 Allied Navy vessels were sunk during the campaign, but that was only a fraction of the total losses from the fighting. Germany and the Axis powers used their naval might to cripple supply chains by sinking 3,500 merchant ships as well. Altogether, over 72,000 people died in the Battle of the Atlantic. With the oceanic combat targeting supply ships, the US tried moving their supplies through the skies with the prototype H-4 Hercules. Hughes and Kaser designed the Hercules. Shipbuilder Henry Kaser and aircraft designer Howard Hughes drew up the plans for this new airborne supply plane, with Kaser's own unique twist. Kaser was renowned as the father of modern American shipbuilding. This plane would travel by sea and then fly to avoid combat zones and finally land at ports in Britain to deliver supplies. The Kaser shipyard specialised in building cargo ships called Liberty ships. These were mass-produced at low cost. The team at Kaser could build a Liberty cargo ship in just 45 days on average. Kaser would later invest in the television industry and real estate. His legacy lives on through various entrepreneurial and philanthropic ventures such as the Kaser Permanente Healthcare Organization, Kaser Steel and the Kaser Family Foundation. His co-designer Howard Hughes was a prolific entrepreneur and highly influential in the American aviation industry but also made millions in real estate and filmmaking. He financed the film Scarface, Everybody's Acting and Two Arabian Nights in the late 1920s and early 30s, the latter winning the first Academy Award for Best Director of a Comedy Picture. His films The Racket and The Front Page were also nominated for Academy Awards. He spent three and a half million dollars making the flying film Hell's Angels, which earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Cinematography. Ironically, it was director Martin Scorsese's 2004 biographic drama of Howard Hughes, The Aviator, starring Leonardo DiCaprio as Hughes, which ended up winning Academy Awards, earning a total of five Oscars, including one for cinematography. DiCaprio won the Oscar for Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role for his portrayal of the eccentric millionaire who founded the Hughes Aircraft Company and invested in several airlines, including Transcontinental and Western Airlines, or TWA. As a pilot himself, he held two world records for flying. In 1937, Hughes broke the fastest transcontinental airspeed record, flying from Los Angeles to Newark in New Jersey in just over 7 hours and 28 minutes. 
Then in 1938, he set a new world record for the fastest round the world flight, completing the trip in 91 hours. Together, Kaser, Hughes and their teams would design a plane capable of carrying 150,000 pounds of cargo with enough space for two M4 Sherman tanks or 750 troops. They gave this plane the tag HK for their combined initials and secured the contract to build three HK model planes in two years. Hughes and Kaser went through seven different configurations which included a twin hull design before arriving at the final layout. The final design had a length of 218 feet with a wingspan of 320 feet and an empty weight of 250,000 pounds. It was powered by eight Pratt & Whitney R4360 WASP Major 28-cylinder radial piston engines which could output 3,000 horsepower each for a total of 24,000 horsepower. Christened Spruce Goose Kaiser and Hughes immediately ran into problems when they were told to construct the plane out of mostly wood, because aluminium and other metals were prioritised for other aspects of the war effort. The wooden plane was given the nicknames Spruce Goose and Flying Lumberyard. Spruce Goose was catchy, but most of the plane was actually made out of birch, as it is an abundant hardwood with a fine grain, making it well suited for machining and structural stability. This material limitation created a significant bottleneck for development, slowing the process down and irritating Kaiser. And a little over a year after the construction began, he left the project solely in the hands of Hughes. Without Kaiser around, the name was switched to what would be the final name of the plane, the H-4 Hercules. Kaiser's departure led to new negotiations with the US government, and the three test models were cut down to just one. Hughes and his team at the Hughes Aircraft Company began treating the birchwood to make it even stronger. They made plywood by gluing pieces together and then injected the plywood with phenyl formaldehyde resins. These composite pieces were then laminated in a mould and cured under high pressure at temperatures of 280 degrees Fahrenheit. This duramold process made some wood shapes up to 80% stronger than aluminium. The technique was also used across various industries during the war, and there were 17 different Duramold techniques, each varied the type of wood and other parts of the process to create new results. Duramolds were even used to make the domes on radar antennas, and they were used in the bodies of missiles. The H-4 Hercules was equipped with elevators, but they were also made of wood with fabric coverings. The same technique was applied to its rudder and various other components. The Trial of Hercules The final model needed to be relocated before it could be fully assembled. Hughes hired a company known for moving houses, and the Hercules had to be moved in four different sections because of its immense size. Each wing required a separate trip, the fuselage was shipped separately, and the final trip contained smaller assemblies for the interior and exterior. The final plane didn't have a hangar capable of housing it, so Hughes assembled the pieces and built a new hangar around the finished plane. By this stage, the bill for the Hercules amounted to $23 million, which is over $200 million with inflation in today's money. Testing began on November 2, 1947, with none other than Hughes manning the helm of this half-boat, half-plane. 21 additional crew members were included for the first taxi test, and Hughes also invited a host of additional passengers from the press and other company representatives who could potentially invest in the plane, bringing the total passenger count to 36. As the Hercules was an amphibious plane, the taxi run took place on the water, in a channel by Cabrillo Beach on what's now San Pedro, California. The H-4 Hercules lifted 70 feet off the water at 135 miles per hour for 26 seconds, leading Hughes and some members of the press to believe that the plane was functionally a success. This was a crucial moment as Hughes had already been called to testify before the Senate War Investigating Committee to ensure that the funds were used properly. I put the sweat of my life into this thing, I have my reputation rolled up in it, and I have stated several times that if it's a failure, I'll probably leave this country and never come back, and I mean it. 
Questions still remained about the H-4's flight ceiling and lift capacity. However, even though the plane cleared its first test, the war had moved on. The plane was no longer deemed necessary and further tests were cancelled. The full-time crew of 300 personnel designated to keep the plane in flight ready condition was cut down to just 50 workers. Though they were sworn to keep the project secret, the group disbanded in 1976 after Hughes passed away. The H-4 Hercules, the plane with the widest wings of its time, never flew again. Legacy of the Hughes H-4 Since its first and only test flight, the Hughes H-4 Hercules has made plenty of pop culture appearances. It was featured front and center of the 1987 animated film Yogi Bear and the magical flight of the Spruce Goose. A large-scale model of the flying lumber yard was used in the 1991 film The Rocketeer, as well as appearing in Scorsese's biopic, and it even shows up in video games. In the 1970s, the US government and Hughes's Summa Corporation started debating on the rightful ownership of the H-4. In the end, Hughes's team would give up his record-breaking H-1 racer and a section of the H-4's wing to the Smithsonian Institution's National Air and Space Museum. Summa Corp also paid $700,000 US dollars to the US government to secure the Spruce Goose and gain commercial protection for the Hercules. Since then, the plane has moved to various places and it now resides in McMinnville, Oregon at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum. And that concludes the history of the Hughes H-4 Hercules, the strategic airlift flying boat. It was one of the mightiest planes that barely made it into the air. So what planes do you want to see us cover next? Let us know in the comments section. While you're there, please hit the like and subscribe button to help out the channel. If you want the juice on another World War II era plane, watch our recent video on the B-36. Thanks for watching and new aviation videos are just over the horizon.